Welcome to Movie Reviews for Life. And right now what I'm doing is I'm going to try and knock out the rest of these uh, Ninja Turtle reviews. Alright, um, this is for the 1993 film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Also known as Turtles 3, Turtles in Time. Uh, which was earlier, I believe it was, no, later given uh, the subtitle to the Turtles 4 video game. Um, that which I had, you know, which was the Super Nintendo version I had. Uh, but anyways, um, this is this is where the films kind of start to go downhill for me. Um, as a kid, you know, I mean, I, I enjoyed the films, comedy, comedic aspects, and still to this day, if you know, like FX plays it or something, I put it on and you know I watch it while I'm on the computer or something, and I'll glance at it. You know, um, it's it, but it, it's lost a lot of its steam mainly because the comedy part was so popular in the second film that they completely just turned their backs on the uh, dark um, origins of the original comics, which you know, and the and the fil first film. Uh, this film was uh, distributed by 20th Century Fox, um, and they also lost uh, Jim Henson's Creature Shop. They didn't provide the animatronics. You know um, that the turtles and and um, and Splinter used. You know, uh, Shredder of course isn't in the film because like apparently he really did die. Uh, I guess the, you know crashing an entire dock on his head kills him better than get crushing him to death in a garbage truck. You know, but um, basically it doesn't tell you a time frame from which this it takes place after part two. Um, it does bring back Paige Turco from Part 2 as April O'Neil. Um, and Corey Feldman returns uh, in this one, I believe, as the voice of Donatello. He, he wasn't in the second film for some reason. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, Rist and Tochi, you know, who played the voice of Michelangelo and Leonardo, returned um, and are, probably, and are the un other only other two people to return um, to the films. They were in all three films as the voices of, you know, Michelangelo and Leonardo. The rest of the cast is, is new. Um, we do have Elias, uh, Elias Cotiez, or whatever you say it. He, he comes back as Casey, but he's, his, his Casey role is reduced incredibly. He's reduced to basically a babysitter, which he even kind of scoffs at it in the film. His main role in the film is as an ancestor named Wet, um, which he did a pretty good job, but I would have really liked to see Casey Jones back in action. He was such he was so cool in the original film. It was sad to just see him used as just the comedy. I mean, they could have just left out all the New York scenes. All the scenes with the, um, with the Japanese swordsmen or whatever, honor guards, they could have just cut all those scenes out, and the film still would have been the same, you know, without without all that, you know. Um, Stuart w Wilson comes in as Walker, basically uh, the main villain. I mean, yeah, we do have the the king or whatever the hell he's called, uh, Lord Norinaga. But he's he's actually not as big of a bad guy as Walker turns out to be. Um, Walker seems to actually ride him more, you know. Um, then we have John Aylward as Niles, which in my opinion probably is the funniest role in the entire film. Which, once again, more comedy, you know. Um, the 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 atmosphere, like the the sets. Well, not really sets, but the areas that they filmed in were quite beautiful uh they really kind of just they come at you basically it's probably the only really good aspect of the film i can really say is the scenery was nice um they did bring back the subway train from the second film or the subway you know that they live in they brought that back uh from the start of the film you already know that this film's gonna suck compared to the other two the beginning of the film starts off with them dancing as a way of working out. And it's also dancing to the cheesiest music I've ever heard. So, yeah. The minute you, I mean, you're, you're expecting the beginning to either be 
them, you know, like, like the first one where they slowly revealed the turtles and, you know, all you see is a shadow. That was such a brilliant way to start the film. Then the second film, it lightens up, obviously, and, you know, the, the way they show them in the second film is completely opposite from the first one. If you notice, um, the way they're revealed in the first film is by a shadow. In the second film, you see them straight up. So it's, you can tell there's a different aspect there. This time, we see them as a comedy, as a joke. I mean, there's nothing, there, there's nothing mysterious about them in this film. Uh, they're not, they're not uh, mysterious. They're not in any kind of way scary. And you wonder why any villains find them scary at all. Because they're not scary. Really, they're just, they're not. Like, even when they're fighting in this film, all they're doing is making jokes. I'd get my ass kicked just because I'm laughing at what they're saying. I mean, really. Um, Vivian Wu plays Mitsu. Um, the female character that turtles meet up with and when they go back in time, which I believe it's 1603 um, in, in feudal Japan and there's mention of a character named Yoshi now I don't know if that's supposed to be like oh my god, it's Yoshi like Spencer's Master or whatever from when he was an actual rat, but it, it's it's impossible because if it's in the 1600s you know, rats don't live that long, so it might be an ancestor of his master. It's never explained. It's kind of just like, oh my god, here's a hint, and let's go. Let's get out of here. Very, a lot of plot holes. Very, a lot. Just basically a lot of plot holes. Um, there's also mention uh, from Norinaga that his ancestors were disgraced by uh, four turtle-like beings, and this is, and his main objective in the film is to destroy the turtles because they look like the the, the four that dishonored his cut and his ancestors but it's never elaborated on it's never come it's never said like oh my god this is for real type of thing or whatever and it's they they make a lot of plots and then they never answer them and that was another big problem you know i think that they just kind of rushed the film um, I, I know that the creators uh, of the Turtles, I think, walked out on the project because they were disgusted with it, you know. Uh, I mean, their names are obviously on the film as producers or whatever, as creators, but they just they left because they were like, okay, this is just ridiculous. This is not our turtle, Turtles anymore, you know. Um, I don't really have much to say. The acting was kind of, eh, you know... Um, the animatronics were crap. I mean, they had like an overbite throughout the entire thing. Um, Angry Video Game Nerd actually did a review of this film, and it's a, it's a hilarious review. If you go on go on uh, Cinemascore.com, I believe, and t and click on the AVGN thing, um, he switched places with Nost Nostalgia Critic, so he reviewed a movie while Nostalgia Critic reviewed a game, a video game. You know, um, but his review of the Turtles 3 movie was, like, hilarious. And he makes a lot of good points. Um, it's, it, nostalgia-wise, I like the film as a kid. You know, it was Turtles. You know, it can't get any worse. And then, of course, the Turtle TV series that Saban, who is most famous for, you know, giving us the Americanized Power Rangers, produced... Uh, I forget, I think it was called Back in the Sewers or something, and it supposedly took place in the film's timeline because it takes place in the same subway station, um, but Shredder returns, I forget, like the whole, I mean, I'm not going to get a review of the TV series because I've only seen a few episodes and I know it's on YouTube. Um, I do plan on watching the episodes just so maybe one day I could do a review, but I'm not in a rush to do it. Uh, Rambo Rat for Life probably seen the show and could probably do a much better review than I can because I watched two episodes of that uh, series and just was like, oh my god. Um, even the episode where they meet the Power Rangers was better than the entire show and this film. Um, but I will give this film two out of five stars. Um, it's, it, it, like I said, the Turtle TV series, the live action series, was much was worse, so... I gotta give it some credit for having something, for being better than something, you know, um, so that's my review, I know it's been a while, it's probably not even the best review, but it's two out of five stars, 
check it out if you're a completist, but that's about it. If you can avoid this film, just do it. I mean, really, your kids will. Your kids might even like walk away from the film if you try to sit them down to keep them busy or whatever. Don't be shocked if you see them still walking around causing mischief because this film really does not capture your attention span at all. Um, it's a forgetful film, basically. So, two out of five. Hope you enjoyed this video.